So welcome to module number two of the Real Relief Foundations Masterclass. In module number two, we're talking about how to optimize your diet. So there's seven sections in this module, and we're going to discuss why diet is so important, how your diet stacks up, eight dietary keys to enhance mental well-being, vegetables and an overlooked mineral, what to drink, and then getting practical on what to eat. And finally, the aims for this module. So why is diet so important? Well, the food you eat can either be the safest and most powerful form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. And we're gonna discuss some scientific studies to actually validate this quote. So here's a quote from the Frontiers in Human Neurosciences Journal. They said, perhaps because gastroenterology, immunology, toxicology, and the nutrition and agricultural sciences are outside of their competence and responsibility, psychologists and psychiatrists typically fail to appreciate the impact that food can have on their patient's condition. So this is just one researcher, or well, a group of researchers, telling us the fact that food is important for mood. And there's five ways that a good quality diet can reduce depression and anxiety. It provides nutrients, so vitamins and minerals, as well as fuel for the brain. It lowers brain inflammation and oxidative stress. It balances out blood sugars and also supports gut health. Please realize that um, there are two modules on, on your diet. and It's this one here in which we optimize your diet and then we'll talk more about food sensitivities in the next module. It's been known for a long time that a healthy diet decreases the risk of depression. There's many observational studies of populations. And this study here on this slide is a review article showing all of the evidence for this fact. And it says that the Mediterranean diet and certain foods such as fish, fresh vegetables and fruits have been associated with a lower risk of depression. Whereas a high fat Western diet and sugar sweetened beverages have been associated with higher risks of depression. Increased intake of dietary antioxidants, on the other hand, have been associated with lower rates of depression. And you get dietary antioxidants from all your brightly um, foods, your, your fruit and vegetables and spices. In addition to the observational studies, there are now clinical trials coming out to validate the fact that our food really, really, really does impact our mood. So in this clinical trial, which is called the SMILES trial, it was a 12-week trial and participants didn't just have mild to moderate depression, they actually had moderate to severe depression. And most of the participants were on an antidepressant medication or seeing a psychologist. So over the 12 week period of the trial, the participants had seven sessions with either a dietitian or a support worker. And the dietitian taught the participants to increase their vegetable, fruit, olive oil, oily fish, whole grains, legumes, and raw nut intake. They also coach them to decrease their high calorie nutrient poor foods such as sweets, refined cereals, fried foods, fast foods and sugary drinks. The results are quite staggering. They, they found that 32% of those that were in the group that were coached to change their diet actually achieved remission. So this means that they, at the end of the 12 weeks, they had very few um, depressive symptoms. This is compared to only 8% of those in the social support group. On average, the depressive scores for those in the diet intervention group actually reduced by 43%. So even those that didn't achieve full remission had improvements in their mood. So this is just one of the studies to show that if you change your diet, you can um, improve your mood and have greater happiness. So let's move on and talk about your diet and when you need to make some changes. So let me ask you, what's, what is your diet like? 
remember to download your workbook from the membership site and you'll find your, the questions there. So let me ask you, do you eat less than four servings of vegetables and two pieces of fruit per day? Do you eat protein at less than three meals per day? So some examples of protein include meat, chicken, fish, eggs and legumes. Do you have strong sugar cravings? And do you drink more than one cup of coffee or tea per day? Do you eat fish less than twice a week? And do you eat red meat less than three times a week? And finally, do you eat a low fat diet? So if you've answered yes to any of these questions, it means that you have work to do on your diet. So let's go on to the next section in which we'll discuss eight dietary keys to enhance mental well-being. After going through all the research on food and mood, and also from my clinical experience, I've come to summarize eight dietary keys that can enhance your mental well-being. So what are these eight keys? Firstly, you need to make sure you're eating adequate protein, having good fats in your diet, and eating ample vegetables. We also want to be caffeine-free. We want to balance your blood sugars, go gluten-free and dairy-free if necessary, and lastly, we want to support your gut health. So in this section, we're now going to discuss um, eating adequate protein. Protein is a source of energy. Its main role in the body is growth and repair. It helps in the formation of muscles, hair, nails, skin, and, and organs too, such as our heart, kidneys, and liver. We all contain a significant amount of protein. For example, a 76 kilogram man is made up of 12 kilograms of protein. That's 16% of his body weight. So protein is very important for the brain and for our brain chemicals, our neurotransmitters. And amino acids are the building blocks of protein. And there's 20 different amino acids. But what's important is there are nine essential amino acids and they cannot be made from the body. That's why they're called essential. And you must get them from your diet. And these are histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, phenylalanine, threonine, tryptophan and valine. And these amino acids are essential to making our neurotransmitters, our brain chemicals. Some of the brain chemicals that you might be familiar with is serotonin, and serotonin is a very calming neurotransmitter. A lot of the antidepressant medications work at increasing serotonin um, levels in, in the brain. But did you realize that you need protein to make serotonin? So tryptophan is an amino acid that we get from our protein. And tryptophan is converted into 5-HTP, and then 5-HTP is made into serotonin. And then finally, that serotonin is converted into melatonin, which is our hormone of sleep. So you need protein for good mood and good sleep too. Another neurotransmitter that you may be familiar with is dopamine, and it's a reward-giving, happy neurotransmitter. And dopamine also is converted into noradrenaline and adrenaline in the body. So you're probably familiar with adrenaline and the fight and flight response. So these are key neurotransmitters in the brain and in the body. And the thing is that, yeah, did you realize that these come from protein as well? So phenylalanine is the essential amino acid, the one that you need to get from your diet, and then that's converted into tyrosine. That's then converted into dopa, which is converted into dopamine, which then goes on in the adrenal glands to produce noradrenaline and adrenaline. So I hope from hopefully you see from these schematics that protein and amino acids are essential, just amazingly essential to mental health. So how much protein do you need to eat per day? 
Well, the dietary reference intake, the DRI, suggests that you eat 0.8 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. So that would mean if you're 100 kilograms that you have to eat 80 grams of protein per day. And for those from America, that is 0.36 grams per pound of body weight. Now, I think that this recommendation is a little bit on the low side. Um, the American College of Sports Medicine recommends much higher levels, uh, between 1.2 and 1.7 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. And that's 0.5 to 0.8 um, grams per pound of body weight. My recommendation is somewhere in the middle, kind of just to, to make it easy for people to remember, but one gram of protein per one gram of body weight. So if you are 60 kilograms, then you need to aim for 60 grams of protein per day. If you're 80 kilograms, you need to aim for 80 grams of protein per day. I personally find that lots of my clients do not eat enough protein. Now a lot of people say oh you know protein's not a big deal everyone's eating enough protein. I challenge you to go and have a look at your diet and actually record how much protein you're eating a day. Okay so the sources of protein the main sources include lamb beef and pork, chicken and turkey, eggs and fish. Um, protein powder, beans and lentils and nuts and seeds are some vegetarian sources and dairy products as well and are quite high in protein. So to get, I just want to illustrate the point that you actually need to be intentional about your protein um, levels in your diet. So here is a way that you can eat 59 grams of protein per day. So having one cup of oat, cooked oats with a cup of milk, um, having 20 almonds for a snack will give you six grams, having two eggs maybe for lunch will give you 12 grams, and eating 85 grams um, or three ounces of chicken breast will give you 28 grams. So this comes to 59 grams of protein per day. So you can see there that the, the chicken breast is um, very high in protein and so if you don't eat um, meat or, or chicken or fish um, it is possible that you, you aren't consuming enough protein unless you're very intentional about it. So let's just, I'll just give you an example of what you'd need to eat to get 61 grams of protein per day on a vegetarian diet. So you could again eat um, cooked oats for breakfast and some almond milk. Almond milk does not have much protein or coconut milk either when you compare it to um, dairy, dairy milk. So keep that in mind if you're um, on a low, on a dairy free diet too. You also need to make sure you're getting protein from other sources. Broccoli would give you two grams in a cup. A tablespoon of um, peanut butter would give you four grams. One cup of peas gives you eight. Again, 20 almonds would give you six grams of protein. A cup of baked beans would give you 15 grams of protein and a cup of tofu would give you 20 grams. So I just wanted to illustrate if you are on a vegetarian diet or a vegan diet, I suggest that you calculate how much protein you're getting per day. As I said, you need protein for the brain. It's, it is essential. Um, so it is yeah, one of my, my, the first, it is the first key to optimizing um, your diet and um, optimizing your mood. And in the membership site, I have a document that um, lists the, the con protein content of different foods. So you can download that there. Or another way to calculate the protein content um, of your diet and what you're consuming is using the Fitness Pal app. And so you can record what food you're eating on a daily basis and that will give you um, a summary at the end of the day how much protein you're consuming. So again aim for one gram per kilogram of body weight at a minimum. 
So a lot of people are asking the question whether they should be eating red meat and they may have heard that it's very inflammatory and that can cause bowel cancer and so a lot of people are avoiding eating it but I think this is a mistake. The problem with the studies is that the, the studies on red meat involve a lot of processed meats such as salami and bacon and ham and frankfurters and so all red meats are not equal. The, the unprocessed meats that you can see in the picture here um, are, are excellent and I recommend that you eat them in moderation. Now moderation is actually three to four servings of 65 to 100 grams of red meat per week. Okay, these provide excellent levels of iron and vitamin B12 which are really essential and red meat is um, something that I review with all my clients to see if they're eating enough of it because I know that in New Zealand at least um, red meat has become expensive and chicken has become cheap so a lot of people um, are eating uh, less red meat because of the price but it's my recommendation that you need to up your levels in your in your intake of red meat up to three to four servings of unprocessed red meat a week. Now the next essential key for optimizing your diet for enhanced mental health is eating good fats. The brain is the fattest organ in the body and it's made up of 50% fat. So fat is good for our brain and fat is essential for our brain and we need it for our good mental health. So fat is not the enemy, fat is essential for the body and it's unfortunate that in the last few decades they've, they've talked about low fat diets and that's what people have been doing. So if you've had a low fat diet in the past, please change, um, please get some good fats into your diet because fat is essential. It's a fuel and it's storage, it's, it helps with brain structure, it actually makes up the cell membrane of every cell in our body and our nerve cells too. Fat also helps make steroid hormones like testosterone and estrogen. Okay so with if you're on a low fat diet it's possible that you're going to have hormonal imbalances because of that. So a lot of people have been trying to reduce their cholesterol but cholesterol's there to make our steroid hormones so it's important. The final thing that um, fats are important for is they're a chemical messenger and there's an omega-3 compound called EPA, there's actually an anti-inflammatory molecule, it actually signals, the, um, signals to lower inflammation in the body. So what are the fats that you should include in your diet? Well you want to have a lot of olive oil that comes from the Mediterranean diet and that's part of the SMILES trial in which they found that changing your diet and increasing your olive oil would improve your mental health. So that's a definite one you want to include. You could also include co coconut oil, ghee or butter, coconut cream in moderation too, some avocado, nuts and seeds and also fatty fish. So some examples of some good fatty fish include salmon, sardines, anchovies and mackerel. Now we will talk more about omega-3s because they are essential fatty acids and we'll talk about that in module number five under addressing nutritional deficiencies. So we're going to move on now and talk about vegetables and an overlooked mineral. So I hope after watching module number one that you've been intentional about increasing your vegetable intake. So let's talk a little bit now about why we want to do that. So having ample vegetables in your diet is another one of the essential keys for enhancing your mental health. And research shows that it's really important to eat fruit and vegetables. Now this is a study that showed that people who eat more fruit and vegetables have lower rates of depression, lower rates of perceived stress, lower rates of negative mood, and a higher likelihood of greater happiness, higher likelihood of positive mood, of life satisfaction, 
of meaning, purpose and fulfillment in life. Isn't that amazing that just by eating more fruit and vegetables you can achieve those things and this association appears to be dose dependent so if you eat a, a large number of fruit and vegetables you're going to have greater happiness if you eat a moderate level you'll have moderate happiness and if you don't eat much you're not going to have much happiness at all. So that's what the research is showing. And there's five ways eating vegetables can help improve our mental health. So it lowers inflammation, and we talked about brain inflammation before, and how that's a hallmark of poor mental health. Um, eating vegetables lowers oxidative stress, and it provides good um, antioxidants for the body. My suggestion is that you eat vegetables and fruit of different colors from the rainbow the more colors you get the more different um, antioxidants that you're going to get in the body that's going to have a really positive effect for you now a third way that vegetables can help our mental health with this is that it feeds our good bacteria so it provides fiber and it provides prebiotics that's food and fuel for the gut um, bacteria and the good bacteria are good we want them there they help our immune system and help lower inflammation in the body another way that vegetables help us is that it provides key vitamins and minerals such as folate and vitamin c and um, and lastly it provides high levels of potassium which is a key mineral that i want to discuss because did you know that 99% of women and 90% of men don't consume enough potassium? So what is potassium? I think it's quite overlooked. It's a mineral, but it helps carry electrical signals to cells in your body. It aids in healthy fluid balance and it regulates muscle contractions including, including the heart. And I think this is something to note for anyone with anxiety that gets heart palpitations or anyone else that gets heart, um, has heart arrhythmia. Potassium could be key here for you. Potassium also helps maintain healthy nerve function supports the cardiovascular system and actually lowers high blood pressure. It supports healthy function of the kidneys also. So here's a few symptoms of low potassium, which can also be called hypokalemia. So weakness and fatigue, constipation, heart palpitations, as I said, breathing difficulties, muscle cramps or twitching, and mood changes. So I've seen quite a number of my clients with anxiety actually have low potassium levels and um, so this is why I'm pointing this out because I haven't heard anyone else talk about potassium with regards to mental health but I think that it could be a very important key especially because 99% of us aren't getting or well, us women um, aren't getting enough potassium and 90% of men aren't getting it either. So if you have any anxiety with breathing difficulties and heart palpitations and muscle cramps and twitching and mood changes, it's possible that it could be due to low potassium. So how much potassium should we be eating every day? Well, it's, been, it's thought that our ancestors actually consumed 10,000 milligrams a day. I'm not sure how they achieved that because it's a, it's a big number. Because the NASM, which is the National Academy of Sciences and Engineering and Medicine, their recommendation is 2,600 up to 3,400 milligrams per day. And the World Health Organization recommends 3,510 milligrams. The Institute of Medicine actually recommends much higher levels, up to 4,700 milligrams a day. And this higher value will actually lower the risk of high blood pressure, cardiovascular disease and strokes. So if you've got any of those risks in your family, you definitely want to aim for higher levels of potassium. So here's some li a list of potassium rich vegetables. Now, most people will talk about how banana is um, very high in potassium and you have about four, 400 milligrams of um, potassium in one banana but 
I just showed you the recommendations that you should be getting three to four, four and a half thousand milligrams of potassium per day. So you'd have to be eating 11 bananas a day to reach that level. So however, here's avocado. Half an avocado will give you 470 milligrams of potassium. Um, a cup of raw spinach, 167. Um, coconut water is one of my secret weapons. Um, one cup of um, coconut water will give you 600 milligrams of potassium. So that's a great idea for anyone that knows that they're low on their potassium intake. So you can come back to this list of potassium rich vegetables. But I just wanted to show you that it's really your vegetables that is giving you a lot of your potassium in your diet. Other rich potassium foods include um, white, white beans and chickpeas and baked beans. So a lot of the, the legumes. Quinoa will give you a 318 milligrams per cup. Um, also nuts and seeds are another way to get good potassium. So um, 30 grams of pumpkin seeds is 220 milligrams of potassium. Uh, also fish is an, another way with 100 grams of salmon giving you 628 milligrams of potassium. Milk also is quite high in potassium giving you 600 milligrams per cup and f fruit also will give you some. Uh, so a kiwi fruit um, 215 milligrams, oranges one will give you 240 milligrams. So I just wanted to give you an example of one way to get 4,000 milligrams of potassium per day. So if you have a smoothie for breakfast and put some coconut water in there, a banana, some raw spinach, alisa and chia seeds, you'll get 1,237 milligrams. If you have a salad, so um, with spinach, tomato, carrots, cucumber, a quarter of a cup of chickpeas, some pumpkin seeds and chicken, that would give you 1458 milligrams. And then at night if you had some salmon with some sweet potatoes, a cup of broccoli and a cup of cauliflower, you'd be getting 1398 milligrams. So I sort of just wanted to show you that you need to be really intentional about getting enough potassium. So even if you're doing the five plus vegetables and two servings of um, fruit per day, you still might not be achieving enough um, potassium. So for example, if we just took out the coconut water out of the smoothie and if we took out the chickpeas and pumpkin seeds from that salad and then we just reduced the broccoli and cauliflower to one um, half a cup each and had chicken instead of salmon you'd actually only be achieving around 2,000 milligrams of potassium per day so you wouldn't be getting the the lowest recommendation which was two and a half um, thousand milligrams of potassium so I just wanted to show you this and because this could be a real key for anyone with anxiety. So trying to really increase their potassium levels. And I gave you some recommendations in module one about how you can increase your vegetable intake. Um, but here's some other recommendations. So as I said, the green smoothies and the salad and the vegetable sticks. But what about a stir fry for lunch or for dinner or some steamed vegetables? And fritters um, are another key way to get um, vegetables hidden in your food, especially if you've got kids. Okay, so what, what happens if you're struggling to get enough potassium? You could consider drinking a glass or two of coconut water per day, or you could consider a potassium supplement. Now, the potassium capsules are, have are only a very low dose, they're only 99 milligrams per capsule. So you, if you do want to supplement potassium, I'd recommend that you do that through powder. And often the serving sizes will be 400 to 500 milligrams. I would suggest that you really look at your potassium levels, especially if you have anxiety, heart palpitations, insomnia or muscle cramps.
Now let's just give you a few precautions around potassium supplementation. Um, as I said, the dosages that you could um, consider are between 500 milligrams once or twice a day. But I would recommend that you monitor your potassium intake first to ensure that you need the supplement. Um, if you're on a medication for heart um, conditions or blood pressure, do not take potassium supplementation uh, unless you talk to your doctor about it first because often there's some contraindications between potassium supplements and these types of medications. And remember that you have the supplement guide and in that supplement guide will be some potassium recommendations. So let's move on and talk about what you should be drinking. It's not only important to optimize your diet, but it's also important to optimize what you are drinking, what f beverages you are consuming. And one of the essential dietary keys for enhanced mental health is to be caffeine free. And I know that I discussed this in module one with you, but I discuss it here as well because it's that important. So as I told you, I shared this study with you that showed you that caffeine can induce a panic attack. Not just in people that have panic disorder or major depression with panic disorder, but also for people that are healthy. So caffeine can induce a panic attack and so it is a triggering chemical and people with panic disorder are more sensitive to caffeine so my recommendation is that you do not consume caffeine at all if you have panic attacks or anxiety now I usually, usually with my clients that have depression, I may allow one coffee a day. That's if I'm, I'm being a little bit kind and if someone's pushing me a lot, I would, um, it's the ideal that you don't consume caffeine at all for, for with mental health. Um, but if you've got anxiety, panic disorder, or you have problems with getting to sleep at night, then I highly re recommend getting off all caffeine so here are the ways that you're consuming caffeine so it could be through your coffee could be through black tea even green tea and matcha has some low levels of caffeine well not not necessarily low moderate levels energy drinks soda like coke pepsi and mountain dew kombucha as well so you've got to be careful about kombucha because it is a fermented food and a lot of people's people um, like kombucha and have it for their gut health but often it's made with um, black tea. Um, cocoa and chocolate are another way that you could be consuming caffeine so the darker the chocolate the higher the caffeine level so I know that many of you are also eating um, dark chocolate for its um, health benefits and you're trying to keep off sugar um, which is great but again um, I want you to trial getting rid of all caffeine in your diet. Now decaf is um, you know, a difficult one. For some people dr drinking decaf coffee is fine and it doesn't induce anxiety but if you're super sensitive even decaf coffee and green tea can um, affect your, your anxiety as well as your sleep. So here's my recommendations about what to drink and what not to drink. So you, you should be avoiding or highly reducing your intake of coffee, black tea, energy drinks, sodas, both high sugar and sugar free, most alcohols and fruit juice as well. So although this um, section is really about reducing caffeine, it's also about getting rid of any um, excess sugar in your diet as well. And we'll be talking in the next module about balancing your blood sugars. But when it comes to what you're drinking, you really need to get off any 
um, drinks that have got a lot of sugar in them and that can be natural sugars like fruit juice um, alcohol's got a lot of sugar in it too and um, definitely sodas they have all, all the sugar added and even the sugar free ones I'm suggesting that you keep off them as well because sometimes the artificial sweeteners aren't good for you and they can be stimulatory as well okay so what do you drink then well mostly you should be drinking water you need to be making sure you're eating drinking two to three liters per day and you could also be having some herbal teas some caffeine free herbal teas you also might like a small amount of coconut water as i said it's high in potassium if you do find out that you're sensitive to blood sugars you may just have to be a little bit careful about the quantity of um, coconut water that you're drinking red wine um, a very small amount a couple of glasses a, a week may be okay for some people some water kefir now water kefir um, like kombucha um, is a fermented food and it can be helpful for gut health as I said caffeine free kombucha decaf coffee and green tea may be okay for some people if you do have anxiety I'd, i recommend that you go cold turkey for a while and then reintroduce decaf coffee or green tea if if you want to but just see if you're sensitive to them or not so we're now going to get a bit practical and talk about what you can eat so taking all these considerations in from this module let's get practical and i'll give you some handy hints on how to do that so let's move on now and get a little bit pra more practical when it comes to what you're eating we've obviously learned about the dietary keys for enhanced mental health and we've covered four of them so getting adequate diet um, protein getting good fats getting ample vegetables and going caffeine free so how do you do this in an easy way well we do this um, using a template called plan your plate and you can find um, the real relief real food planner the bonus um, document and the plan your plate documents in our membership site so download that um, and it has all this information in there but what is the plate planner well it's a really practical guide on what to eat you choose a protein source and you can say that a quarter of your plate should be a protein source and the protein should be about the size of the palm of your hand so if you've got a big hand you can eat a bit more if you're small and, and thin um, your your protein source will be a little on the smaller side so this helps with um, protein uh, with portion sizes as well you add the protein source then you add a healthy carbohydrate and this should again be a quarter of the plate or the size of your fist so rather than the palm it's actually your fist and so that's the amount of healthy carbs that you want to be eating with every meal we add a serving of healthy fats and then we go on and add some non-starchy vegetables and your vegetables should fill up half of your plate and so this should be two to three servings of vegetables one serving is equivalent to half a cup of cooked vegetables or one cup of raw veggies so let's discuss what these um, different portions could include so a healthy protein can include beef chicken lamb or pork and grass-fed free range where possible fish also is another option here and you can use small oily fish um, because when they're small they don't accumulate um, so many heavy metals they have a short lifespan and so their toxin load is very low so they're ideal salmon is also another great option and it's got lots of um, omega-3s in that so you could bake it grill it fry it or um, smoke it or have smoked um, you can buy smoked and um, salmon in a packet 
Uh, tin sardines or tuna are another easy option, a good one for lunch, but make sure you limit tuna to one serve per week because of the heavy metals um, and tuna is a, a, a larger fish. Okay. Do not eat shark, king mackerel, swordfish, tilefish, marlin and orange roughy because these are large, larger fish and they have high mercury content. Other protein sources include eggs and I suggest two to three eggs per serve. If you're a smaller person have, have two eggs, if you're, if you're a bigger male um, have three eggs per serve. These could be poached, boiled, fried, it could be in an omelette or a frittata. Beans and lentils are another protein source, keep in mind they're also quite high in carbs. And tofu, tofu is, a, is a great um, vegetarian or vegan protein source too. So is protein powder. And normally you would use at least two um, heaped tablespoons or two scoops depending on, on your protein source. My suggestion is that you consider collagen powder and we will talk about that in the supporting gut health module. But the thing is collagen powder is great at healing the gut lining. So it gives us a, a double whammy here, a good um, benefit that not only does it provide us protein for the brain and our neurotransmitters, but it also heals the gut lining and it's great for wrinkle prevention too. Pea protein is another dairy free um, protein powder option too. Um, high fat Greek yogurt which is unsweetened is another um, healthy protein option too if you do tolerate dairy products. So how often should you be eating um, these particular protein sources? It's recommended that you should eat eggs three times a week, um, chicken or poultry two to three times, fish two to three times a week, and as I suggested that you limit tuna to, to one or less a week. Um, red meat three to four times per week, remember that should be unprocessed red meat, and legumes um, three to four times per week, and these recommendations are based on the SMILES trial. So when you look at the plate, we've talked about um, the protein that you should have on your plate, and it's a good one to start with. I always think, what protein source am I going to have in this meal today? And then we move on to the carbs. And here's some healthy carb options. Starchy vegetables, including pumpkin, sweet potato, potatoes, beetroot, carrots or parsnips some gluten-free grains. So we haven't discussed this, but um, going gluten-free is one of my eight essential recommendations um, for mental health. And the gluten-free grains that you can consider include rice, quinoa, buckwheat, millet, or amaranth, and oats. Now oats shouldn't be consumed with in, for anyone with celiac disease but they're usually okay for a low um, a gluten-free diet. Other healthy carbs sources include beans and lentils, um, fruit, and I've recommended um, keto or paleo or gluten-free seeded bread just because it makes it practical for lunches just having um, an easy carb option there for you. So next we want to include a healthy fat with every meal. It not only helps the brain and the structural components and, and our hormones, but it also balances out our blood sugars. So you could include one to two tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of coconut oil, ghee or butter, a quarter of a cup of coconut cream, a quarter to a half of an avocado, a small handful of nuts or seeds, or you could make a salad dressing made from olive oil and apple cider vinegar. So finally, we want to eat ample vegetables. I know I'm always, I'm always talking about vegetables rather than fruit, but anyone with blood sugar imbalances or anyone concentrating on losing weight shouldn't it consume too many um, too much fruit, they should concentrate on vegetables. So yes, one or two pieces of fruit a day is great, um, 
but yeah it's the vegetables that you really want to increase the the con the the intake in your diet so here's some healthy vegetable choices so asparagus bean sprouts brussels sprouts broccoli cabbage capsicum cauliflower celery cucumber eggplant green beans kale lettuce mushrooms onions salad greens silver beets spinach tomato or zucchinis so the smiles trial actually recommended six or more servings of vegetables a day and they recommended three pieces of fruit i would probably um, limit that to two and again talking about how we can um, improve our vegetable intake i've said this a couple of times but smoothie a salad a stir fry vegetable sticks um, steamed veggies and grated in fritters or mints. So let me show you how easy it is to use this plate planner. So if you're thinking about a breakfast, maybe start with a protein source. Maybe you could do eggs if you added a healthy carb option like sweet potato and healthy fat such as coconut oil or avocado. And then on the side, you added some non-starchy vegetables like mushrooms, onions and tomatoes. Doesn't that sound great and quite easy too? I think you should keep cooking reasonably easy. Um, secondly, another breakfast option or a snack option is a green smoothie. So starting with that protein powder. So collagen powder, as I said, is a great option and it's quite smooth. So it mixes in really well and kind of gives the smoothie a, a milky kind of feeling. Secondly, you could add a healthy carb, some, some fruit. So it could be frozen mango, or it could be frozen berries, it could be a banana. And then add some healthy fats. Now, LSA is a great option. LSA is linseed, sunflower and almond, and they're all ground up. And it really helps you um, stay regular, regular too. So you could put a teaspoon of this in, and then you could add some non-starchy vegetables such as spinach or kale. And that makes a great breakfast, and I usually have one of these every day. Another breakfast option or dessert option is yogurt with um, buckwheat and berries so you could add a greek yogurt as the protein source so full fat unsweetened add some roasted buckwheat as the carb add some nuts and seeds for the healthy fats and this isn't doesn't quite fit with the um the template the the plate template but um, you could add berries rather than your non-starchy vegetables in this case so moving on to some lunch options. So a salmon salad and a banana. So add the tinned salmon or some smoked salmon for the protein source. Um, add a piece of fruit as the healthy carb. Um, you could have some avocado or some olive oil um, as your salad dressing. And then add that to a nice vegetable um, salad so salad greens sprouts tomatoes red onion grated carrot and beetroot so some good options there also for lunch you could base it on eggs you could have an omelet or you could have a frittata with a salad so some healthy carb options is um, pumpkin and beetroot um, healthy fat could be olive oil again and then a side salad to go with that I hope you're getting um, inspired and, and can see how easy it is to eat healthy. Okay, for lunch or dinner, you could do some minced tortillas with salad. So you could start off with um, mince and beans as a protein source. Your healthy carb um, could be gluten-free tortillas or wraps. Um, usually not going to get multi-grain in the tortillas, but you know, if you could use this, um, you know, the, you don't have to be perfect at every single meal, but this kind of gives you a guide on how to um, 
optimize your diet and, and mean that most meals that you're eating are going to be a lot healthier. So you could include some avocado or you could cook with olive oil and then you can have the non-starchy vegetables. So you could grate some carrot or zucchini into the mince and have some tomato as well. Or on top you can put some lettuce or some carrots. Um, so this is a great idea for kids and cook because kids usually love mints and kids usually lo love um, tortillas or wraps. So for dinner you could do a fish meal with um, coconut cream as the healthy fat um, source and you could put that on rice as a healthy carb. And finally with some green vegetables on the side like green beans and broccoli and bok choy. This is something that I often do and put some, you know, some put some ginger and some garlic um, in the coconut cream for some flavouring. You could always just keep it as simple as meat and three veg. I think there's nothing wrong with that at all. So starting off with a, a slab of meat, some steak or a chicken, um, putting some potatoes, kuma and beetroot on the side. Um, and then finally having some non-starchy vegetables such as cauliflower or zucchini or broccoli. Now I just want to show you a couple of snacks that sort of fit into the plate planner um, plan as well. And so this is quite um, a nice dessert or snack that I quite love. You can use banana as your healthy carb and you can use nut butter as the protein. And then, so you can put the nut butter um, on, you can slice the bananas in half and then put, put the nut butter on the banana and then you can sprinkle it with some healthy fats um, with, such as LSA and chia seeds. So you don't get the vegetable component in the snack but it is really great for balancing blood sugars and giving you a bit of protein and um, fats as well. And finally, another snack that you could consider, and it's a great afternoon tea for the kids, is hummus and vegetable sticks. So hummus not only provides um, a protein source, but also a carbohydrate source, and it's got olive oil in the hummus too. And then you could put um, carrots or capsicum or celery or cucumber on the side. So I hope that has inspired you and given you some ideas. Remember that eating this way will balance your blood sugars, it will lower inflammation in the brain and body, it will lower oxidative stress, it provides amino acids for neurotransmitter production and it supports gut health. And most importantly, it will improve mood, will reduce anxiety, it will reduce mood swings, it will stabilize and increase energy levels and it will increase life satisfaction. So let's move on and talk about how you're going to implement this during the next week. So get out your workbook and find the section in module number two about what aims you have for the week. So some of the aims that you could prioritize is reducing caffeine intake if you haven't already. And this is especially important if you've got anxiety or panic or um, find it difficult to go to sleep. Also increase your water intake to th two to three liters a day. So maybe find um, a glass bottle that you could put on your desk at work or that you can put in your handbag to carry around with you. Try to find some strategies that will work for you. Maybe remember to have a glass of water at breakfast, at morning tea, at lunch, at afternoon tea and dinner and before bed and you'll be close to um, getting your two litres um, a day. Increase vegetable intake at every meal. So I want you to be aiming for at least five serves of vegetables a day. Um, I'd suggest probably more. And if you're doing those two to three serves of vegetables at every meal, you are going to easily do this. And also incorporate one to two servings of fruit a day. Now one of the most important things to do here is, well it's all important, but um, protein. So it's something that a, a lot of people overlook. Even if they're having a healthy diet and even if they're eating a lot of vegetables, their protein levels could be low. 
and also think about your fish and your red meat intake what are they like are they too low or and do you need to incorporate that so think how you can do this maybe think about having um yeah having two red meat meals um, at night a week and one or two fish and then eating leftovers for lunch so you could also um, decide to concentrate on a good breakfast as I said sometimes it's good to concentrate on one meal um, that you want to improve and when that becomes a habit then move on to the next meal so I want you to go and decide which one of these aims are most important for you which ones you've already incorporated uh, maybe just start from the top okay and inc incorporate some of these um, guidelines this week also I want you to look at the fats and the oils that you are currently using in your cooking and in your kitchen and I want you to replace them okay make sure you get some good quality coke, um, olive oil and maybe some coconut oil too so with regards to your protein and your potassium intake something that is helpful is actually to track what you're eating just for a week or so just to give yourself um, a guideline or kind of to realize what your levels of protein and potassium are and then once you've tracked that and assessed what your levels are then you can be more intentional about increasing um, your protein and your potassium intake finally you could consider a potassium supplement or mm -hmm. coconut water if your potassium intake is inadequate so i want you to aim for 4000 milligrams of potassium a day and i want you to do this especially if you have anxiety or heart palpitations but remember do not take potassium if you are on a heart medication or blood pressure medication or talk to your doctor first I trust that you've enjoyed the module on optimizing your diet and I look forward to hearing how these small changes in your diet um, impact your mood. Now I'll see you in the next module which is all about food sensitivities.